This chapter, Mr. New York, the story of Grover Whalen. New York's fabulous ticker tape parades. Grover Whalen rode in more of them than any other man. He was the big town's official greeter of celebrities. He was also the inventor and organizing genius of the great welcoming pageants. In creating New York's ticker tape parades for distinguished visitors, I had in mind one theme, greatness. The greatness of the queen of cities, the majesty of her harbor, the beauty of her towering skyscrapers, the power of her millions of people, and most of all, the warmth and lavishness of her welcome. To me, a New York ticker tape parade is the truest symbol of the town I love, the world's most magnificent and open-hearted city. The last decade of the 19th century marks the beginning of Grover Whelan's love affair with New York City. His parents were immigrants. He was born and raised on the Lower East Side, proud of the melting pot and its mixtures of peoples and customs. Young Grover was a good student, intelligent, ambitious. Graduating from a New York college, he wanted to study law and would have made a fine lawyer. But his father died suddenly and Whalen went to work. For several years, he ran the family's construction business. By 1918, Grover Whalen was happily married, a good husband and father, with a keen interest in local politics. At New York City Hall, Grover was a familiar figure with his help, John Hyland had become mayor, and Hyland was grateful. He showered Whalen with jobs. Soon, Grover was practically running the city. When the Doughboys returned from the First World War, Whalen was with General Pershing, a member of the welcoming committee. It was the start of his career as a greeter of celebrities. By 1926, with the welcome for Admiral Byrd, Whalen's greeting technique was perfect. Fireboats spraying water. A flotilla sailing to meet the hero. Grover Whalen to escort him to the city. Nothing left to chance. Whalen timed the parade to start at noon when crowds were on the sidewalks. The ticker tape confetti was ready. Thus, Grover Whelan welcomed Queen Marie of Romania in the days when Romania had a queen. It was spectacular showmanship. The same royal treatment for Gertrude Ederly first woman to swim the English Channel. Whalen was called a greater showman than P.T. Barnum. Bigger and better welcomes. This one for Charles Lindbergh. Tons of ticker tape. For Whalen, it was all a labor of love. The great greeter worked in a department store on ordinary days. He was general manager a successful executive. He'd worked his way to the top, starting behind the counter. Then, in 1928, a new job. Police commissioner of New York City, sworn in by Mayor Jimmy Walker. It was a tough assignment. Grover Whelan became New York police commissioner during the Prohibition era and pledged to clean up the crime-ridden city.
Declaring war on bootleggers and racketeers, he sent raiding squads to round up the city's underworld bosses. No molly coddling of gangsters. Whalen's orders, treat them rough. Whalen didn't succeed in stamping out crime in New York completely. No police commissioner ever did. But when he left office, the big town was a far safer place in which to live. Now it was 1933. Grover Whalen was NRA director of New York and organized a huge parade to launch the National Recovery Act. He led the city's fight against the Depression. Meanwhile, he planned a great new project, the New York World's Fair. Ground was broken at the fair site three years later. But as Grover Whalen laid the cornerstone, he was worried. The fair was in danger because European governments were reluctant to take part in the exposition. Off to Europe, he flew to convince European leaders to buy space. In Rome, he arranged a meeting with dictator Benito Mussolini. Il Duce was no match for Whalen's super salesmanship. He heard Grover remark, not so innocently, that Russia had taken space at the fair. That made him decide that Italy must also be represented. The deal was closed for five million dollars. After that, it was easy to sign up the other European nations. The World's Fair of 1939. Its magnificent pavilions bore the stamp of Grover Whalen showman. Opened officially by President Franklin Roosevelt, the fair drew tremendous crowds. Visitors came from near and far to gape at its wonders. But Whalen was unhappy. Although he had created an artistic success, financially it was a failure. The cost of transforming marshland into wonderland had been enormous. $155 million. Another reason for the failure, the Second World War had begun. The wartime Civilian Defense Corps of New York City was Whalen's next assignment. He organized firefighting teams with the same energy he'd applied to ticker tape parades. It was a time of ever-present danger. New Yorkers had to be trained to handle the emergencies of an enemy air attack and learn their duties under Whalen's direction. That job done, he flew to Alaska. Six months, Whalen served in Alaska as civilian advisor to the Army, sharing its hardships. Then, with the victorious end of the war, back to the ticker tape parades, the work Whalen loved best. For General Dwight Eisenhower, returning triumphant from Europe, he arranged a stirring welcome that outshone anything ever seen before. For Prime Minister Winston Churchill, grand old man of England, another memorable reception. Whalen took special precautions in the welcome for General Douglas MacArthur. His dismissal from his Korean command had caused high feelings. But there were no incidents. The general was cheered by seven million New Yorkers. As the years went on, Grover Whalen's love affair with New York grew more intense. He built scale models of the city of the future. He planned vast projects, a fashion center to make New York the style mecca of the world, a great convention hall to honor the war dead. Dreams of a dream city. 
Whalen's plans were highly praised, but they were pigeonholed because they cost money. New York's 50th anniversary celebration was the same story of frustration. Whalen was chairman and had to settle for a parade of old-time relics. His plans were considered too expensive. But New York appreciated his efforts. From Mayor William O'Dwyer in 1950, Whalen received a gold medal for public service. He deserved it. Mr. New York had earned his title back in the Roaring Twenties. The years had passed, Grover Whalen's hair had turned gray, but he still looked forward. One day, I firmly believe the dreams I've had for New York will come true. She will be the fashion and artistic center of the world. Commercially, she will reach new heights. Her skyscrapers will rise ever higher, and her ticker tape parades will continue. Truly, a mighty monument to the creative powers of free men and democracy. Grover Whalen, Mr. New York. <laughs>